Good morning, YouTube. I'm seeing a 6.1 off the East Coast of Honshu, Japan at uh, on the 14th, which is today's date at 14.22. Uh, magnitude 6.1, 36.1 degree north by 142.1 degree east off the east coast of Honshu. 6.1 is not going to be good. We know what Fukushima is doing right now. Now that can only fester the matter. I'm looking for more to come up on it. Um, stay tuned. God bless you all. 6.1. Take care. I wanted to give you a quick update on some things that have been going on over at Fukushima. And there's been a little bit of uh, misinformation that has been given out by TEPCO uh, and that was uh, disproved today. Now, this is a video of um, the reactors from a couple of nights ago. And the ocean is actually behind the reactors here. And you can see a large amount of what appears to be uh, smoke or steam that are is coming out of the, the direction of um, reactor two and three and if you recall two is the one who's been ha having problems with the temperature controls in the reactor pressure vessel which if you go back and you search um, the the news you'll see that the containment was um, was compromised and and that was known by the uh, the uh, electric company that runs the site, TEPCO, and it was known by Prime Minister Can, and it was also known by the NRC and our government all the way back in the beginning of April. And they buried this story and they keep pretending that everything is okay at these reactors, that they're in cold shutdown, and that is just complete bullshit. You cannot have cold shutdown of a cracked reactor vessel where the fuel has leaked out and is in the ground. Now there may be some remnants of the fuel remaining in that reactor vessel. In fact, there was an endoscope that was done on reactor two about four weeks ago, and since then there has been a steady increase of one of the temperature gauges after they poked a hole in this reactor to look around. Now if you look at videos of what that film showed, there were actual gamma rays being visualized on the film. They were not able to locate the fuel. Um, there's obviously some kind of fuel in there that would be causing these uh, gamma rays to occur. But you know, now, a few nights ago, we, we have smoke and steam that are pouring out of it. This is not the only video that documents this. There's, there's several on this guy's site where you can see there's been steam coming out of pipes. Um, there's been steam coming out of the ground at night. These are not fog events. After watching these cameras for 10 months, I know the difference between uh, fog that's rolling in and steam that's coming out of the ground. The problem is that steam is not just steam. It's radioactive steam. And uranium has a tendency to, once it starts reacting, and it doesn't need any special circumstances to start reacting. It can just bounce off other electrons and it spreads like a wet. And if it starts at one reactor, it can spread to the pools. They've had problems cooling the pools lately. And, um, and TEPCO has been saying, well, they think that the temperature gauge might be broken because there's two other gauges in there and they seem to be okay. And yesterday a report came out saying that another temperature gauge that's in the containment vessel around that vessel is also reporting high. And a Washington blog came out today also saying that um, the temperature now and, and the, the goal is to keep it under 80 degrees Celsius to maintain cold shutdown status. And um, what's actually happening, oh, let me find my thing here, where is it? Fukushima reactor temperature surpasses 752 degrees more than four times maximum for cold shutdown. This was posted on a Washington blog yesterday. That's over 400 degrees Celsius. Now today, Fukushima Diary, who has been um, following the story since the get-go, um, he has had several uh, people who are working on the Fukushima site that have been giving him information. He had a phone conversation uh, with a nuclear worker 
and a former worker at the Fukushima site who said, in short, if the temperature goes up to six to 700 degrees Celsius, reactor two will explode. Now, considering that the fuel probably isn't even in that reactor, it's in the ground underneath, that in itself is really not as big of a concern. But what the concern is, any kind of fission that develops can infect the other reactors, the chlorine in the ground, and the spent fuel pools that are on site. And there's six of them, plus a common spent fuel pool that's in the ground. If this fission reaction starts occurring, um, this would be very, very bad. This is probably the worst thing that could possibly happen outside of a hydrovolcanic explosion. And the architect of Reactor 3 has been saying for months that that could happen any day because of the corium that's fissioning in the ground. Um, today, there was a report that came from Tohoku University saying that all the faults underneath the plant have been activated and that one good shake on that site could cause spent fuel pool to fall. But if these reactors and the corium and the spent fuel pools all start infecting each other, um, which, uh, which could very well happen with how things are falling apart in that, at that site, what we would have to do over here is, um, is do the same thing if one of our major cities was nuked and any of us live downwind from that. And I'm going to enclose some links at the bottom. And this is not to scare people. This is to tell you what the government is not telling you, what TEPCO isn't telling you, what Japan isn't discussing, and that this could happen any day. And, and based on the earthquakes that are going on over there, on the, the cameras, the, the the radioactive steam that's pouring out of the ground, the temperature that's rising um, in, in this reactor and the fact that today TEPCO um, decided to come clean and say that xenon had been detected in the reactor 2 containment vessel. Xenon is a product of uranium fission, so that means that there is recriticalities that are going on. It doesn't say what the detection limits are there's a possibility that this detection has been ongoing this whole time. Um, you know, we have fluctuations in the cesium levels in the last few days. They've been really high in Tokyo. Today, if you look at uh, the weather maps, you know, Fukushima is right here. Everything's blowing out to the ocean today, and that's what's forecasted for the next few days. And I checked a couple different weather sites to confirm this. So we go to our um, animation of the jet stream. And let me just pull this down a little bit so you can see dates. This would be Sunday. Here we go. This is today. So whatever's been released in the last two to three days at the plant is hitting right here now. Um, and, and this looks like the pattern that it's going to be for the rest of this week. So we're talking everything from uh, the southern coastal areas of Alaska coastal areas of British Columbia, that includes Vancouver, um, you know, Seattle, Portland, Northern California, all the way down to probably LA. These areas would have to shelter indoors for a period of two to four weeks. And that's not me saying that. That's what the civil defense research had indicated would have to happen in order to protect the health and welfare of our citizens if there was a nuclear attack. This is a nuclear attack that's, that's been happening. Um, but if, if we have some kind of fission event that infects the other pools at that site, uh, the, the significance of this is going to go up substantially. And it needs to be taken very seriously. Two Minnesota environmental and public interest groups released a report today suggesting there's a threat of drinking water becoming contaminated by nuclear power plants along the Mississippi. Several researchers briefed reporters at the Red Wing Public Library reporting that almost a million people could be affected by contaminated drinking water if a leak or accident occurs at a nuclear power plant. After the nuclear meltdown in Fukushima, Japan last year, researchers began checking, checking into possible contamination of water for residents living within 50 miles of an active nuclear power plant. 
The groups claim 75% of nuclear power plants have leaked tritrium, or tritrium excuse me, a radioactive hydrogen that has been known to cause cancer and genetic de defects. And they want the government to start paying closer attention. The Foundation of Excel's monitoring of equipment and programs date back to the 1970s. And if they're asking us, the communities, to host an aging plant for another 20 years, it seems reasonable that they should respond cooperatively to our monitoring concerns. Xcel Energy responded with a statement saying, quote, when we found elevated tritium levels none high enough to be a public health concern, we've investigated the case, increased our monitoring, and made changes as warranted. The environmental groups are asking the U.S. to complete safety reviews of all power plants and focus more on clean, renewable energy. A high levels of radioactive cesium has been detected in noodles produced in Okinawa apparently because they were made with water filtered by the ashes from Fukushima produced wood. Uh, the noodles called Okinawa Soba had a level of radioactivity of 258 becquerels of cesium per kilogram. Uh, the restaurant that produced them had kneaded them with water filtered by the ashes of the Fukushima prefecture produced wood. So. Uh, ongoing. And uh, Arnie Gunderson, they are creating 100 to 1,000 times more radioactive material by burning the debris than keeping it in con concentrated form. And you got to remember they're burning this radioactive debris in open furnaces um, and dumping the ashes into the rivers at night. <laughs>